Hi everyone, happy new year. Welcome or oh, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kushi Kishore. Today we are gonna very quickly run through my top five of 2023. Disclaimer, I don't have my books here with me right now, so you are gonna see them on the screen over here. I'm gonna be quick, I'm gonna be concise, I'm gonna try and sell it to you and show you why I love them so much. So at number five, we have If You Have Me by Yuni. This is a graphic novel. It follows two girls in their college life, finding each other and falling for each other. It sort of reads a little slice of life, but it is very much a romance graphic novel. I do not know why, but this is the one graphic novel I've read in 2023 that I absolutely cannot get out of my mind. It has the whole shy girl, introvert girl versus the player, the misunderstood one. It's really fun. It's an easy read. The art style is really cute and you get some really sweet moments out of it. As number four, we have Daughter of No Worlds by Carissa Broadbent. This was my first Carissa Broadbent book and I have no regrets. It was so good. The fantasy world, the characters, the plot in itself, it was all very engaging. I think I gave this book five stars without even having to think about it. In this story, we have Tisana, who was taken from her home at a very young age, separated from her family and made to be a slave in this estate mansion of this rich person from an upper class and she spent all of her childhood and her teenage trying to make enough money to buy her own freedom when she hits around 18. It starts from her trying to buy her freedom and things going really wrong and her having to escape her country and go to this different country that she's always heard about and she ends up in their clutches instead and her story from there. It has a mentor-mentee trope. The connection's really sweet. You actually believe in the chemistry. And the fantasy world is really nice. There is a war. There is a very interesting weapon I have never seen in any other story, something like this, which is what really hooked me in the story. I fully recommend. I'm definitely going to be continuing the rest of the series this year and hopefully even starting on Carissa Broadbent's other series, The Serpent and the Wings of Night. Number three and number two are very much on par with each other. Not one is better than the other. And they're both series. Well, one is a duology, one's a series. So in number two and number three, interchangeably, because it really doesn't matter, we have the Bridge Kingdom duology by Daniel L. Jensen and the whole Heaven Officials Blessing series by Mo Xiang Tong Xu. I am 100% sure I butchered that name. Please forgive me. For Heaven Officials Blessing, if you haven't already, I would recommend watching my previous video because it's only about that series. It's talking about my obsession, how I found it, how much I love it, my physical reactions to me reading the final volume it was so good there was crying you should go just you should just go watch that video it's really worth it but very quickly it's about this prince who ascends to godhood and then gets kicked out and then ascends again and then gets kicked out and then ascends for the third time and we see his journey start from there it's eight volumes of absolute beauty and it takes you through 800 years worth of story and trust me it's not boring it's so beautiful and really well thought out and the little details really make up the whole story if you still aren't convinced just go watch my previous video i swear it will convince you to try the series out bridge kingdom as a duology is what made the beginning of 2023 for me i read this in the very beginning of 2023 and it was awesome i read it on my kindle it was such a good experience I was so happy. It got me so excited. It gave me the feeling that I got when I initially read A Court of Thorns and Roses. It was exciting. The main female character is a complete badass. I gave the first book five stars. Even the second book was almost five stars. It's just so good. So good, so good, so good. So our main character is a daughter of a king. And she, as well as her sisters, like around 20 of them, are raised completely away from everyone in their country. They're raised in the middle of the desert and they're raised as spies and murderers. Like since they were kids, that's all they've been taught how to do. 
They're extremely smart, extremely badass, extremely cool. One of them is going to be selected by their father to marry the king of a neighboring country, kill that king, and find a way to take over that country and all of its resources because that country's resources are highly sought after. Our main character goes, there's that struggle of have I been lied to my whole life, but also I have some sort of weird attachment and attraction to this king, to the person I'm married to. The chemistry is amazing. The main character, she's my favorite female main character. She's my favorite character of 2023. You have to go read Bridge Kingdom. You don't understand. I spent all of 2023 pitching this book to people and forcing them to read it. In fact, I worked at Waterstones Piccadilly for a couple of months and I was hand selling this book like crazy because I need people to read it. If you like Sarah J Maas, if you like Fourth Wing, if you like Serpent on the Wings of Might, if you like these kind of things, there's a pretty decent chance you will like The Bridge Kingdom to read it. And in the first spot, we have a book that I gave 4.5, but with how much I have been thinking about it since I read it in the beginning of the year, which is a lot, by the way, I might as well just call it five. It has been a constant thought in my head. I have recommended it so many times. Might as well call it my Roman Empire for right now. It is so different from what I usually read, but I absolutely loved it. I even have a video up for it. You guys should go watch it. This is How You Lose the Time War by Amal El Mohtar and Max Gladstone. I have a whole video out just talking about how beautiful the writing is, how beautiful and cyclical the plot is, how insane the sci-fi bit of the story is, but how you don't really need to understand it because it makes you focus more on the characters and their connection. And I'm not much of a sci-fi girly, so I'm really glad I still picked it up. We are following two characters who are agents on opposing sides of a time war. And it's Agent Red and Agent Blue. And initially their connection is very much just boasting and taunting each other and a little bit of a cat and mouse chase. But then it grows into something so deep and so meaningful and so timeless. The connection between red and blue and the letters that they send to each other and how creatively they do. Because yes, it is an epistolary novel and what a beautiful one at that. Honestly, since I read that book in the beginning of 2023, I was pretty sure it was going to be on my top five and I am not at all surprised that it ended up being my most favorite book of the year. It's not just about how well the story was written but it's also about how the story makes you feel i truly believe your favorites list is going to be very subjective it's about what it makes you feel so this is how you lose the time war made me feel many things many beautiful things before i sign off i have to tell you about a couple more books these are books that would have definitely gone on the list if i decided to do a my top 10. let me just send some honorable mentions your way the first one is and Every Morning the Way Home Gets Longer and Longer by Frederick Bachman. It's such a beautiful book. It's about this granddad who's losing his memory and he's trying to explain that concept to his eight-year-old grandson who he's very close to. They have a very close relationship and he's trying to explain that it's okay and this is how life is and it's nothing to be upset about. And you see their connection, you feel the pain, the way... The whole concept is described. It's so clever, but also so painful. And it's such a short read as well. And it still manages to pack a punch. Oh, it was so beautiful. Then there is I Want to Eat Your Pancreas, which is a manga by Yoru Sumino. It's a very sweet story about a girl who's dying and wants to make the most of life and about a boy who is very much alive, but doesn't make the most of his life sort of like they have that contrast between them they become friends and then they become more it's a very sweet and sad story honestly i think pain was just a theme of all my favorite books in 2023 <laughs> finally i want to mention volume one two and three of yona of the dawn by mizuho kusanagi this is also an anime called akatsuki no yona i might be getting it wrong but it's one of my favorite animes. It was never completed, which is why I picked up 
the manga because I really want to read further into the story. I want to know what happens next. It's a fantastical, adventurous story about this princess and her bodyguard. She's been very shouted all her life and suddenly one day things go really wrong in the palace and she has to flee and to find a way to protect herself, her kingdom and the people she loves, she has to put together this army of dragons. You will understand when you see the story. I don't want to give you spoilers. The character arc Yona has in this story, beautiful, fantastic. If you like nothing else, that will be something you will be able to respect. And with it being one of my favorite animes, honestly, it was a given that I would end up loving the manga as well. Am I surprised? Not really. Anyway, this is my list for now. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you're having a decent start to the new year. Once again, Happy New Year. I am gonna say sayonara now. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, and I will see you very, very soon in the next one.